Good afternoon. You're watching Across the Fence. I'm Jolay Whitney. Filmmakers like Alfred Hitchcock and Tim Burton have set their films in the Green Mountain State, but in a state that prides itself on local, who better to portray Vermont than a Vermonter? Today, we're talking with a Vermont filmmaker who's gone Hollywood while staying close to his roots. Liam O'Connor Genero was raised in Rygate, Vermont, but he's, making, he's been making movies all his life. He's made two feature films, Zephyr in 2016, and the latest, Butterfly Queen. O'Connor Genero is a director, editor, and writer, and the founder of his production company, Walrus Dice. Thank you for making the trip over from the kingdom to speak with me today, Liam. It's wonderful to be here, Joe. Thank you so much. Before we talk about the movies you've made, how did you get interested in making movies in the first place? That is a wonderful question. Um, okay, there's a great apocryphal story. Uh, so when I was four years old, uh, The Phantom Menace came out, and uh, my parents and myself and my little brother, who was very, very young at that time, all went to see it in the drive-in. Um, and I think that they were expecting that both of us would go to sleep and they'd get to see the you know late night screening of The Phantom Menace. Um, but I didn't go to sleep. And I didn't particularly want to watch The Phantom Menace either. So what I did was I crawled over the back seat into the trunk of the car and like put my face against the back window and I watched A Bug's Life, which was playing at the other end of the drive-in on the other screen um, without any sound, obviously, because I was listening to the radio. For those of you who don't know how drive-ins work, you kind of like, your car radio plays the sound that is, is on the movie that you're watching. This drive-in had two screens. So I watched A Bug's Life with no sound. Um, and that's the first memory that I have of watching a movie. Um, and I was just completely fascinated by the way that a story can be like beamed into your brain in that way. It's a completely different form of storytelling from anything I'd experienced up till then. So I would say I was hooked from that point on. And making movies are an incredible undertaking, both time and money. How have you managed to make two in the span of 10 years? Wow, that's, <clears throat> um, I would say, an incredibly supportive community is first and foremost. Um, yeah, I would say for both both productions, both Zephyr and The Butterfly Queen, um, there was a massive amount of community engagement. We had friends and family and, and neighbors donate everything from like food to supplies to um, equipment uh, to lumber to their time to help us build our sets um, to we were able to film in um, a quarry uh, that was owned by a local local quarry, quarrying company um, that I was able to get access to just sort of on a handshake. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a type of filmmaking that is really difficult to do um, in, in more established or more urban spaces. Um, but the magical thing about making movies in Vermont is that you can, um, you can find the person who can give you access to any given thing that you want, just sort of through neighborly, hey, do you know this person? Oh yeah, I know that person. So the networking here in the state is really, it's, it's really a different kind of, of magical beast that you can't do in Hollywood. And you mentioned your first, um, your first feature film, Zephyr. Um, so let's take a look at your, the trailer for that movie and we'll talk about it a little after. Hey guys, we are Zephyr. No, we're glad to be here. always run over people or only on show night? You watch yourself around these jokers. That drug, we're gonna die. Have you ever been in love? <laughs> so what are your memories making the movies ever? I just remember that every step of the process was like an entirely new entirely new challenge new bees new like oh this is how this works um we if memory serves it was um something like a 25 day shoot um and we filmed six days a week and um the sort of 11 core members of the cast and crew were staying in my parents barn on like hay mattresses um and we would yeah just be sort of like by the by the very seats of our pants getting each thing shot that needed to be shot we were trying to film all of these big concert sequences 
using almost no extras and filming in like high school gymnasiums and auditoriums and making it look like it was a larger venue and that there were more people there. Mm -hmm. um, and so really just each day kind of pulling it together um, and, and not being able to foresee all of the challenges that were to be faced. Um, so I'd say a huge learning experience in, in that instance. Um, and yeah, and I just remember everybody, again, really pulling together like the, um, the lyrics for the songs that the band performs in, in the movie uh, were written by um, Eve Smith, who plays April, the, the girl in the yellow shirt sort of during production, um, she was writing those lyrics. And so we, we like staggered the performances throughout the shoot so that there would be a song for the band to perform by the time we got to that. Um, and so that was just like a really interesting hotbed of creative talent and everybody really brought, brought their, brought their best game. Um, yeah, I, I just remember it being an, an incredible community experience. And that was your first feature film. Of course, you have a second one now, um, Butterfly, Butterfly Queen. Um, we're going to take a look at that trailer in just a second, but can you describe quickly what it's about? So the Butterfly Queen is a farm punk fairy tale uh, about getting your gosh darn friend back. Um, yeah, it's very, it's very Vermont while never saying the word Vermont. Um, yeah, it was a departure from Zephyr because we went a lot heavier into the fantasy. Uh, and so... I'm, I'm excited about it for that reason. And you mentioned that it was very Vermont without, without explicitly saying it was Vermont. How do you incorporate um, Vermont as a state and maybe a culture into your work? So that's an interesting question. Um, especially with the Butterfly Queen, we've been on a festival tour now for the past year or so um, and screened it throughout the state and throughout the country. And actually we had an international screening a couple of weeks ago. So the feedback has been much more varied than on any of my other productions. Um, and so one of the main things I think that that people pull out of that film is like, this is the Vermont, the Vermont vibe, is that the characters, when they enter this magical world, when the sort of fantasy starts to hit them, their reaction to it is much more, not quite go with the flow, but like a little bit more resigned than you often see in, uh, in fantasy stories and like characters being like, oh, well, I guess this is, this is how these people are. This is the, this is the situation we're in now. Let's roll with it. Um, and they're not afraid to sort of immediately start getting dirty and, and tearing, like tearing clothing on the, this rough journey through the woods. And so the, um, yeah, the, the, the fact that the characters are so very gung ho and kind of ready to just take what, take what life throws at them. Um, even if it's very weird, I think is a particularly Vermont characteristic and something that people have drawn out. Um, and additionally, the story really centers around this idea of um, wanting to stay at home and, because you love the place and also wanting to leave because there might be more opportunities elsewhere, uh, which I think is a particularly salient topic for Vermonters and, and certainly young Vermonters. Okay, um, with that in mind, let's take a look at the trailer. She can make you think things. What? No. The queen. You want your home back. Don't look at me. She was your best friend. Casey, let's just go. Looks like a train. That's freaking weird. Run! following us. Open it! Open it! There's different rules in here. So let's talk a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff. Um, Vermont is one of the few states in the country that doesn't have a film commission, and that means that there are certain perks that other filmmakers might get in other states. So tell me how you incorporate that and work around that as a filmmaker. 
Oh man, this is a great question. And this is a conversation that is currently quite actively going on in, in the film community in the state. Um, I think that, I mean, one of the, one of the obvious things is that Vermont does not currently have a tax incentive program, um, which many, many other states have, which is basically if you spend a certain amount of money on film production in that state, um, then you get to, you get to write off that certain amount on the taxes that you would have paid to that state and, and you get a rebate and it can be a really pretty extreme amount. Um, and that's why that's why certain states show up in the end credits of a lot of movies. Like there's a lot of films shot in Georgia. There are a lot of films shot in Louisiana. Um, and there's a lot of films shot in New Mexico and sort of the list goes on. Um, and even in, in films immediately, uh, the states immediately around Vermont, um, for instance, New York and Massachusetts both have really strong, uh, incentive programs, which is why, uh, the movie super troopers was not shot in Vermont. Um, and, Similarly, that's why the show Wednesday was not shot in Vermont, even though it's set here, because uh, it was a lot cheaper to film in Romania. Um, anyway, so working around that um, is, I would say, possible at the um, the production and budget level that we were going for with both of these films. Um, both of these films had small enough budgets that they wouldn't have received tax and tax breaks anywhere that we shot, um, and so that consideration was sort of off the table. Um, and then again, like I was saying earlier, um, being able to get so many of the necessary elements of production, either uh, at a very steep discount or through like neighborly sweat equity. Um, for instance, we needed a school bus for one of the sequences in the film. And um, I knew somebody who had a school bus. And so I produced a short video to promote um, one of his his businesses and in exchange got a, a a good deal on getting the school bus, buying the school bus from him. Um, and that it's that kind of just back and forth and knowing people and Absolutely. talking to people and saying, please. To learn a little bit more about Liam's work, you can check the website on our screen. Thanks, Liam. That takes care of Across the Fence for today. Thanks to everyone here at WCAX for making today's program possible. And thank you for stopping by Across the Fence. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.